Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to another day of our daily devotionals. Thank you all for tuning in and thank you all for watching. If you're someone who who has never missed my, a, a video, a single video of my devotionals, may the Lord bless you. But if you're someone who keeps on missing, well, may the Lord deal with you and bless you as well. But anyway, we thank the Lord that we can have this another day of our daily devotionals. And we're still on our mini-series on Psalm chapter 23, right? And we're already through with two verses verse 1 and verse 2 and this morning we're going to look into verse 3 and again we'll be looking into one verse each day there are only six verses but perhaps there's more to what we can uh, dig in into this passage so open your bibles to psalm chapter 23 verse 3 okay psalm chapter 23 verse 3 it says here in my version he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. In other versions, this is rendered as he restores my soul. But here in this version that I'm using, it says he refreshes my soul. Again, let me read it to you. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths of right paths for his name's sake. In other versions, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. You know what? There are a lot of things that we need to learn from this verse. Now, as I have said in verse 1, God is pictured as the God who sustains or the Lord who sustains. And we ask the question, has the, how does the Lord sustain? Well, we find the answers in verses 2 and 3. In verse 2, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. That is how the Lord sustains, right? In verse 3, this is how the Lord sustains as well. By first, he restores my soul or he restores our soul now perhaps we may ask the question what is the meaning of the word restore or how does it or how is it or what is the definition or how is it being pictured when the lord being our shepherd restores our soul you know what if you're going to look into the original hebrew language restores or restore has the idea of the rescue of a lost one it has the idea of the rescue of a lost one. Of course, in if, I, I don't know, I haven't tried shepherding. Well, we, we had no goats or sheep in our, in our hometown. But, you know, this is a common knowledge that sheep, they would always go astray. They would always go astray. And it's the task of the shepherd to look for the missing sheep, to rescue the lost one. And this is what we picture out God doing when David says that he restores our soul. It has the idea of the rescue of a lost one. And according to this theologian, he said, it may picture the straying sheep brought back. And we know that this is what Jesus Christ is doing. He came to seek and to save which was lost, right? He came to seek and to save which was lost. And this is what God is doing. He restores our soul by bringing us back into the flock or into the pen or by bringing us back into his arms being our shepherd in the hebrew the words restores my soul can mean brings me to repentance he brings me to repentance so in other words when david said he restores my soul he was trying to say that the lord brings me to repentance now we all know that in the life of king david he had committed several sins also he had committed the most uh, familiar one which is of course his adultery with bathsheba and perhaps there were some other sins that he had committed in his life the point is he was able to say that the lord being his shepherd brings him to repentance you know what part of the shepherding of god in our lives is that he brings us to our repentance and you know what he uses pain he uses difficult circumstances so that we would be brought into our repentance and you know what perhaps this pandemic that we are in as we try to relate these truths into our situation perhaps this pandemic that we are in perhaps this is god's way of bringing us into our repentance my brothers and sisters in christ we need to acknowledge that if we are living in sin, and if we continue to live in sin, God will surely call our attention and He would want us to be brought back into repentance. He would want us to be rescued by bringing us back through repentance. In other, um, according to other theologians as well, restores my soul as the picture of, as I have said, repentance and also conversion, right? Conversion. So God, being the shepherd, is in the business of 
saving those whom he would want to be saved. Again, this is in accordance to his will and pleasure that he cho chooses and he has elected several certain individuals to be the recipients of his grace, to be the recipients of the salvation that he has given through Jesus Christ. And God is in that business. He is doing that through his shepherding. The verse or the statement, he restores my soul according to its use in the original Hebrew language can be somehow paraphrased into he restores my soul to its original purity, right? To its original purity. Mind us, when we come to the saving power of Jesus Christ, of course, we have been in, or Jesus Christ has imputed his righteousness in us and he has made us clean, he has made us pure through the blood that he has shed on the cross. And there are times that we keep on sinning, we continue to sin because the sinful nature is still in us. But the fact that God restores our soul is the, the fact that he restores us into our original purity that was now grown foul and black with sin according to Spurgeon. For also what good were it to have green pastures and a black soul. Wow, <laughs> this is what Charles Spurgeon said. Now this is again what God does in our lives. You know what, my brothers and sisters in Christ, perhaps through this pandemic, God is calling our attention to be repentant of our sins. As I have said in my previous devotionals, in my previous videos, perhaps you have your own pet sins in your lives, in your life, and God doesn't want us. He want God doesn't want that. He wants us to get rid of all these pet sins, of all these sinful habits in our lives. That's why he calls our attention, perhaps through this pandemic, because he would want us to be restored to our original purity. The Lord cares so much about our purity. And this is the highlight of the scriptures. When you look at the New Testament, of course, the, the, the concern of the apostles was not on how to grow the church. They were not so concerned about how to build mega churches or how to grow your church by numbers. They were not so much concerned about that. They were so much concerned, first and foremost, of course, about doctrinal purity and about sexual purity because these two things were attacking the churches in the New Testament. My friends, God cares so much about our purity that He would want to restore us, that He would want to bring us back into repentance. He would want to bring us back through repentance. Speaking of sexual purity, I hope some of the youth of our church are watching this video. I hope you are careful in maintaining your purity. Again, sex is not for everybody. It is only for those who are married. And if you would want to engage into sexual immorality, for sure, there would be serious consequences. But if you would want to maintain, and if you would ask God to help you maintain your sexual purity until marriage, for sure, God would bless that and God would honor that because He desires that we live holy and blameless and pure kind of lives. David says, He restores my soul in a way that God leads him back into repentance. The second part of the verse, it says, um, He leads me into paths of righteousness for His name sake. So, there you have it. God being our shepherd restores our soul, brings us into repentance, and He leads us into paths of righteousness. Now, the shepherd... We find right here, our God being our shepherd is also our guide. He is a guide. The point is, the sheep didn't want or didn't need to know where the green pastures or still waters were. All it needed to know was the shepherd or where the shepherd was. Wow, right? We don't need to know where where would these provisions be, where would these blessings be. We just simply need to know where our God is because it is God's. Um, responsibility to lead us to where he would want to provide for our needs right likewise the Lord would guide David to what he needed if we connect verse 2 into this verse right here the Lord or in other words David he was just waiting upon the Lord on what God would do to him on what God would provide for him and it says again in the paths of righteousness the leadership of the shepherd did not only comfort and restore David, he also guides his sheep into righteousness. God's guidance of David had a moral aspect. Now, if we combine these two parts of the verse, he restores my soul. Yes, he restores our soul. He brings us into repentance because it is God's desire that we, he should always lead us 
towards righteousness. My brothers and sisters in Christ, don't you ever wonder why God is calling your attention through difficult circumstances because He wants you to be led or He wants to lead you towards righteousness. And that is the goal of Jesus Christ into our lives. That is the goal of sanctification into our lives. That we should live holy and godly lives. That we should be led into paths of righteousness. My brothers and sisters in Christ, here in this world, we're here to live or we're, we're called to live our lives in the holy, in the most holy and blameless kind of way. I'm not saying that we need to be perfect, but I'm saying that we need to be conscious of how we live our lives. You know what? Right now that we are in lockdown, we have all the time in our home and perhaps some of us are idle. We went back to ECQ due to the rising numbers of our of the positive cases here in Cebu City. So one thing that we need to acknowledge is that Whenever we are idle, or whenever we have all the time in the world, whenever our mind is idle, that's the time when we are most tempted or Satan is tempting us to do something. The point is, we need to maintain our righteousness, our holy standing before the Lord, even in this time of pandemic, even, even in this time of um, lockdown. According to this theologian, he said, They are thenceforth, or henceforth, led in the paths of righteousness. In the way of holy obedience, obstructions are removed, they are strengthened to walk and run in the paths of God's commandments. My friends, God desires that we should live our lives, that we should live holy and godly lives. And if there's one thing that we need to work out in this time of crisis, in the time of pandemic, it has to be our own personal holiness. So let me ask you this question. How is your personal holiness working out this time? How is your sanctification right now that we are in this pandemic or right now that we are in this lockdown? I hope and pray that even though we are in this crisis, even though we are in this difficult situation, we are able to maintain our righteousness. We are able to maintain our holy and blameless kind of life. And this is what God desires from us. Again, verse 3 says, He restores my soul. He leads us back into repentance. He leads, He brings us back through repentance. And He leads us into paths of righteousness for His name's sake. After all, everything that we do in our Christian life should all be for the glory of God and for His name. Again, whatever we do, it would surely reflect to who our God is, right? So if we do terrible things, if we do immoral things, ungodly things, then it would surely reflect to other people who, the, who is the God that we are worshiping. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let's try to maintain our standing before God and our standing before men. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you, O God, for your faithfulness to our lives. We give you praise and we give you thanks. For you are the God who restores our soul. You are the God who calls our attention, O God, whenever we are living in sin or whenever we are being swayed away by sin, Lord God. You use difficult circumstances to catch our attention, Lord God so that we would be brought back into repentance. And I pray that we would be repentant enough, Lord God, as we um, become serious in our relationship with you. And Lord God, as you restore us, our, as you restore our soul, our soul, Lord God, you are the one also who leads us into righteousness. And you care so much about our purity, O oh God. I pray that we would be able to live holy and godly lives with the help of your Holy Spirit. Lord God, we desire that we would uh, be pleasing in your eyes and also in the eyes of men. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us grow in our relationship with you in a way that we would be careful and be conscious of sin and help us, Lord God, to disregard sin and our lives. We thank you for your words this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. That's all for today. See you again tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.